everyone. My name is Ben, and welcome to Election Night 2020. I will be covering, I will be providing up to the minute coverage of this election night, and the candidates are the Republican and incumbent president, Donald J. Trump, Republican from New York, versus Senator Tim Kaine, Democrat from Virginia. Now, we're going to look at a polling map right now, as well as talk about some of the events of the past four years before we get into this, because we've still got a little time before the first poll closings, um, so we need to fill the space somehow. Um, so we're going to recap the primaries. The Republican primary was fairly uneventful with the only contention being from Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky who dropped out fairly early on in the race after his home state's primary and Donald Trump easily got the nomination again. The Democrats on the other hand had a wild primary season with 23 candidates ranging from almost conservative or even almost Republican to very far left. However, only seven did make it to the Democrat to the debate stage. That would be Sherrod Brown of Ohio, Tim Kaine of Virginia, Elizabeth Warren, who despite her insistence early on in 2016 and 2017 that she was not going to run for president, she did opt to run. Kanye West, on pure star power alone, made it to the debate stage and managed to come fourth in delegates when it was all said and done. Andrew Cuomo of New York, Cory Booker of New Jersey, and Joe Manchin of West Virginia tossed his hat in the ring. Now the Democrat ticket is Tim Kaine and former governor of Colorado, John Hickenlooper, is the vice presidential nominee. The Republican ticket is Trump and Pence, as it was four years ago. Now on to some major events of the past four years. The most no one of the more notable ones was Bernie Sanders passing away on the campaign trail. Both candidates offered their condolences to the Sanders family and both expressed their admiration of Sanders, Trump even going so far as to say his heart was in the right place and he was a good man. The debates during the 2020 election have been considered a wash by most people with nothing truly eventful happening and Trump sounding a lot more professional, but still with some typical Trump moments. The economy has continued to perform beyond adequately and has continued to make leaps and bounds especially in the industrial area where the Dow Jones Industrial Average has hit 24,000 not too long ago in October. In Michigan, despite all people saying that there was no way it was going to happen, Senator Kid Rock, or his actual name, Robert Ritchie, unseated Debbie Stabenow for the Michigan Senate seat and he has actually proposed the legalization of marijuana at the federal level. In North Korea, there was a successful coup d'etat with a republic forming. However, even the United States considers this government an extreme right-wing nation. And the new North Korean government is looking to reunify with the South and become the Republic of Korea. Due to increased hurricane activity, especially ones above category three and numerous 
higher category storms appearing, various atmospheric and weather groups have decided to add a sixth category, which starts at wind speed, sustained wind speeds of 180 miles an hour. When the census is finally released later this year, after the election, U.S. population is expected to reach 360 million people. When it comes to the Supreme Court, Ruth Bader Ginsburg has passed, unfortunately, at the age of 88. It is always sad when a Supreme Court justice passes away, and it is always sad to see anyone pass. That is. Her replacement is nominated by Donald Trump, was Joan Larson, and also Justice Kennedy retired from the Supreme Court, and Donald Trump put Meg Ryan in his place. Interestingly enough, he has nominated two and appoint, successfully appointed two women to the Supreme Court. Puerto Rico in the 2020 election is to vote on a proposed constitution to become a state and in order to maintain parity in the Senate, at least in theory, from Republican states and Democrat states, because Puerto Rico is hypothesized to be more Democrat-leaning, Republicans have been in the Senate have allowed other regions to vote on whether or not to become a state, particularly the Pacific Islands of Guam and the Northern Marianas have been merged, and parts of Northern California are also voting to become their own state, which already has a proposed name of Jefferson. Currently, there is some poor weather going on in West Virginia, which may make it hard to get returns from that state. So, um, this is the polling map. And I don't know why that flashed quickly. Um, that was a little strange. I'm just gonna run through some key pre-election polls. The, the pre-election polling for at the national level shows that it's a dead heat with both candidates polling 48% and 4% undecided or going to other candidates, um, particularly the libertarian ticket of Adam Kokesh and James P. Gray. In Georgia, Trump maintains a 51 to 44 advantage with the rest being undecided and other candidates. In Indiana, Trump maintains an 11 point advantage, 56 to 45, with the rest being undecided or going to other candidates, of course. Just assume that if it does not add up to 100% that the rest is undecided in other candidates. In Virginia, Tim Kaine maintains a three point lead, 50% to 47. In North Carolina, Trump maintains a four point advantage, 50 to 46. In Ohio, Trump has a 10 point advantage, 53 to 43. It's a dead heat in Florida. Tim Kaine holds an advantage in Maine at large, 47 to 48, or 48 to 47, my apologies. In Missouri, Trump maintains another 10 point advantage, 53 to 43. New Hampshire is a dead heat at 46% apiece. Pennsylvania, Trump maintains a slight advantage, 49 to 47. In Arizona, Trump maintains a 50 to 45 advantage. In Colorado, Tim Kaine leads by 7, 50 to 43. Michigan is a dead heat with no candidate holding an advantage, both tied at 47. In Minnesota, Tim Kaine holds a narrow one point advantage, 48 to 47. Tim Kaine also leads in New Mexico by 10, 50 to 40. Trump leads in Wisconsin, 49 to 47. In Nebraska's second congressional district, which went for Obama in 2008, but hasn't done, but hasn't given its votes to, to someone other than a Republican, other than that one occasion. Trump maintains a 53 to 41 advantage. 
In Iowa, Trump maintains a 53 to 41 advantage as well. In Nevada, is a dead heat, though. Much like 2016, early voting um, early voting returns indicate that the Democrats are probably going to win there. Now, one of the things pollsters have done, and why Trump appears to have a better appears to do have an advantage in the polls, is because, especially at the state level, pollsters have decided to poll more rural voters to ensure that they don't whiff like they did in 2016. However, there is still a high degree of uncertainty. So, it is now 6.30 on the East Coast and we have our first results. In the state of Indiana, Trump is expected to win and we are projecting that when all the counting is done, he will win 57 to 40 percent, and this is just, and on, however, we are only have six percent of precincts reporting. In the state of Kentucky, Donald Trump will pull out the victory. Currently, only five percent of precincts are reporting, but we expect Trump to win 63 to 36 when all the counting is done. And in the state of Vermont, Bernie Sanders' home state. And someone who, up until his untimely passing, campaigned extremely hard for Tim Kaine. Vermont gives its three electoral votes to Tim Kaine, 66 to 33. And that's, of course, when we expect, when all votes are counted, we expect that to be the margin of victory. 8% of precincts are reporting at this current time. And this is just how the map looks. Nothing really surprising here, and everything is just as it should be. No real surprises here. Ex okay, and now it's 7 o'clock, and Georgia, we're saying that it is too early to call. Currently, the vote is 65% to 33%, with only 6% pre of precincts reporting. In Virginia, Trump also maintains a 66 to 33 advantage with 6% of precincts reporting and is way too early to call the state based off of returns and exit polling data. And this is what we can do. <coughs> My apologies for that. In the state of South Carolina, we are projecting that when all the counting is done, Donald Trump will win by 19 points over Tim Kaine, 59 to 40. And this is just based off of our exit polls and where the pre and where the numbers are coming from. And this is just as of 6% of precincts reporting. And this is what the map looks like. Light shades of pink or light, sh yeah, pink will indicate a state where Trump holds a lead, but we have made no official projection. So do not count those votes. And red states, of course, are for Trump. Blue states are, are for Senator Tim Kaine. And there's nothing really here as the clock turns 7.30 on the East Coast. And in the state of Ohio, as expected, it is too early to call. With only 6% of precincts reporting, the candidates are tied at 48%. And in the state of North Carolina, it is too early to call. With 6% of precincts reporting, Trump holds a narrow one-point lead, 50 to 49. And interestingly enough, I'm getting word that West Virginia is having issues getting their returns in and we cannot report on West Virginia. I'll let you know when we get those, when we get that data. Um, and truthfully, I may be surprised. Um, this is kind of where we expected it. Typically, North Carolina, you know, starts off with more Democrat votes and then more Republican votes come in. And Virginia, we're expecting what we're seeing here. Ohio is just, you know, it's traditionally been a bellwether state, but I think its days as a bellwether are over. 
especially when Trump won by nine points there in 2016. And it is now 8 p.m. here on the East Coast, and we can project that Donald Trump, among this bevy of poll closings, Donald Trump will win the state of Alabama, and when all is said and done, he will more than likely win at 66 to 33. Connecticut will give its seven electoral votes to Tim Kaine of Virginia, who is, I forgot to mention, is looking to become the 14th president to hail from the state of Virginia. And he will more than likely win the state 62 to 37. We are also going to project that Tim Kaine will win in the state of Delaware, 58 to 41 when all is said and told. And in the District of Columbia, no real surprise here, Tim Kaine is going to rack up a ridiculous margin, um, similar to that of what you would see in a one-party state. Uh, and he will get three electoral votes from that state. In the state of Florida, it is way too early to call, but Tim Kaine holds a four-point lead there with only 6% of precincts reporting. These are 29 electoral votes that are extremely valuable for Donald Trump, and he must win these or make gains elsewhere. And we are going to also project that Illinois will give its 20 electoral votes to Tim Kaine, and when all is said and done, Tim Kaine's going to walk away with this one by 18 points. Maine's at-large votes, these are two electoral votes that go to the person who actually wins the entire state of Maine. It is too early to call based off of current, uh, based off of current modeling and returns. Tim Kaine does hold a four-point lead there, 49 to 45, with only 6% of precincts reporting. However, we can call Maine's first congressional district and second congressional district based off of historical voting patterns and the way exit polls are looking in that state. And Tim Kaine, when all is said and done, will get 55% of the vote and Trump will only get 43% of the vote in that district. However, in the second congressional district, Trump will have a larger lead than Tim Kaine does. We are still not sure whether to expect higher turnout in the second or the first congressional district. But when all said and done, Trump's going to win that district 57 to 41, which is a large lead. And we can predict that Maryland will go to Senator Tim Kaine, and he's going to win it by 19 points. And kind of because our talking of because we've taken a little bit of time to explain the situation in certain areas. Uh, Maine actually has about 10% of all precincts reporting, which is significant. We are also going to project that Massachusetts will give its 11 electoral votes to Senator Tim Kaine, 59 to 39, which is about a 20 point advantage. We will predict that the state of Mississippi will give its six electoral votes to Donald Trump. And when all is said and done, Trump is going to walk away with this one, 65 to 33. In the state of Missouri, Donald Trump is expected to win. And when all is said and done, he's going to win at 55 to 44. And they currently have 15% of all precincts reporting. It is too early to call the state of New Hampshire which, as we all remember, was the closest state in 2016, both in terms of raw vote count and percentage-wise. And it's looking no different here tonight, where currently the candidates, with only 8% of precincts reporting, the candidates are in a dead heat. In the state of New Jersey, 14 electoral votes will go to Senator Tim Kaine, and when it's all said and done, he will win 55 to 43, which is decently close. There were times when the advantage did drop below 10% during the camp campaign trail, but it always rebounded right back. 
Donald Trump will win in a narrow landslide in the state of Oklahoma, gaining its seven electoral votes. We expect him to win 70 to 28. In the state of Pennsylvania, it is much too early to call this state, though Tim Kaine maintains a hefty advantage, 55 to 43, with only 5% of precincts reporting. Uh, Pennsylvania takes a little bit of time, uh, similar to Georgia. Georgia will be one of the later states called just because they take their time to get their votes in. And Pennsylvania is known for starting heavily, heavily Democrat, and then as the night goes on, getting closer and closer and closer. And that's because Philly counts their votes first and gets them in first. So we move on to the state of Rhode Island, which is almost a fifth of the way through counting all their votes. And we can already project that, and we could have projected it as soon as they closed, but this is just what happens when you talk about other states first. Rhode Island will give its four electoral votes to Tim Kaine. And Tim Kaine's going to walk away with an 18-point win in the state. In the state of Tennessee, Donald J. Trump will gain its 11 electoral votes, 63 to 35, when all is said and done. And this was no real surprise here. And we're going to go ahead and look at the map. We've got two states that are at dead heat, and currently, at least in the swing state, votes... Tim Kaine does have a little bit of an advantage in Pennsylvania and Florida, meaning that if he were to hold on to those, there is a good chance that he would unseat Donald Trump and become the next president, especially if he were to pick up Ohio's votes. And we are still waiting on word from the state of West Virginia. And I will update you as soon as we get that, and of course, you know, Donald Trump needs to pick up both Pennsylvania and Florida, and he needs to retain Ohio. And we can actually project now at 8.30 p.m. that West Virginia will go to Donald Trump 75 to 24 when everything is said and done. We've still only got 4% of precincts reporting, though I expect that to rapid to change the weather must have uh, knocked down communications in the state, but that it seems to be over and we can make the projection. We can also project that Donald Trump will win the state of Arkansas 59 to 40 and gain its six electoral votes. And looking at the map now, um, well, the story really hasn't changed. Um, we will update you whenever things change in a state. Uh, we won't give you, you know, updates every single minute. But, you know, the campaign trail was, it was what you expected. Uh, Trump attempting to expand the map, both in the Northeast, even going so far as to run ads in both Connecticut and New Jersey. He also played to try and win Minnesota New Mexico, Colorado, Nevada. He even made a slight play for Oregon at the onset of the campaign. Um, but he withdrew later on. Tim Kaine just tried to play in the Southwest and tried to maybe make inroads into North Carolina, as well as win Florida and Pennsylvania. And clock is turning to 9 p.m. and we have more states closing, the second largest poll closing of the evening. And it is too early to call the state of Arizona, but Donald Trump maintains a slight lead 50 to 47 with only 5% of precincts reporting. And those 11 electoral votes are extremely valuable, especially to Republicans for the future. In the state of Colorado, Trump maintains a narrow 1% lead with only 8% of precincts reporting, and I don't know why that shows 11 electoral votes. Colorado only has 9. I think our graphic is just wrong. Um, but, you know, this is still too early to call the state of Colorado. In the state of Kansas, Donald Trump will pick up its 6 electoral votes, 63-33, when all is said and done.
in the state of Louisiana. Donald Trump will walk away with this, with these eight electoral votes, 64 to 35, when everything is tallied up. And to another swing state, Michigan. It is too early to call this state, but Tim Kaine maintains a 1% margin with 8% of precincts reporting. In the state of Minnesota, it is too early to call this state, but Donald Trump has a one-point advantage with only 6% of precincts reporting. And we can actually project Nebraska's at-large two electoral votes will go to Donald J. Trump's, and we expect him to win those votes 65 to 34. We're also going to project... Nebraska's con first congressional district, which is an additional one vote, also 65 to 34, with 7% of precincts reporting, and we will also give him, or he will earn, the third congressional district's single electoral vote, 75 to 24. It is too early, however, to call Nebraska's second congressional district, which is one electoral vote. We have 6% of precincts reporting in that uh, district, and Trump maintains a 56-43 advantage there. Moving on to the state of New Mexico, it is too early to call this state, but Tim Kaine maintains a 50-point lead with 6%, or not a 50-point lead, my apologies, a 50-43 to 43 lead with 6% of precincts showing results. In the state of New York, Donald J. Trump's home state will go to Senator Tim Kaine. Donald Trump did attempt to campaign more heavily here in an attempt to win, maybe for the sake of vanity, his home state, but he will lose it 57 to 40, and Tim Kaine will walk away with Trump's home state. In the state of North Dakota, Trump will, however, bag these three electoral votes, 69 to 30. And in the state of South Dakota, he will also net three more electoral votes, this time winning 68 to 31. In the state of Texas, it is too early to call. We just do not have enough votes from the state in order to make that call. However, this was expected to be a very easy, to be a comfortable, maybe even easy win for Donald Trump. Currently, he leads 53 to 45 in the Lone Star State, and these are 38 extremely important electoral votes for him. In the state of Wisconsin, it is much too early to call the state, and it's 10 electoral votes. Trump holds a 50 to 49 percent lead in that state, with only 6 percent of precincts reporting their results. And we are also going to project the state of Wyoming with some ludicrous numbers. Donald Trump will win 78 to 21. This is a 57 point lead, easily making this the most conservative state in the union. Um, and I'm hearing reports that Donald Trump will actually win all the counties in Wyoming, which is peculiar because normally the Democrats do sneak away with one of the counties uh, near Yellowstone Grand Teton. Ohio is currently too close to call, but Trump maintains a 50% to 48% lead with 37% of all precincts reporting. And those 18 electoral votes are extremely important. No Republican has won the presidency without the state of Ohio. And we're going to go ahead and just take a peek at the map. And yes, there is a lot of red, but there's also a lot of pink. This means do not count those votes just yet. And don't count those light blue, those baby blue votes yet either. And let's not forget that Michigan and New Hampshire are complete dead heats as it stands. Currently, it is now 10 p.m. here on the East Coast, and we are going to say that it is much too early 
to call the state of Iowa and it's six electoral votes. Currently, Tim Kaine maintains a 51 to 48 percent lead with only 8 percent of precincts reporting. And we move on to the state of Montana where we are fairly comfortable in predicting that Montana will go to Donald Trump along with its three electoral votes, 59 to 40 percent. And in the state of Nevada, it is much too early to call, though Tim Kaine holds a 50 to 40 percent six percent lead in the state and we can call whoa we can actually call the state of ohio which will go to donald j trump and we're expecting that he will eventually win the state 55 to 43 there's 55 percent of all precincts are reporting however when all is said and done we expect trump to have a 12 point victory which is significant because I think this marks the end of Ohio being a battleground state, even let alone a swing state, a battleground state. I, I don't think Ohio is going to be contested much, too much in the coming years. And it also looks like we can project Texas's 38 electoral votes to go to Donald Trump by 11 points with a 55 to 44 percent lead we have 33 percent of precincts reporting this is no surprise trump did expand his margins from 2016 though not by as much as maybe he would have liked uh, texas does appear to be drifting into what we would consider battleground state territory of within 10 points so that is something to look at to, um, that is something to watch in the coming years, especially in 2024 and 2028. And we can also project that New Mexico will go to Tim Kaine, 55 to 43, when all is said and done. And this isn't too surprising. New Mexico has always been the blue, really the blue state that occasionally is close and rarely votes for the Republican. And we have 45% of all precincts reporting in that state. If things change, we will, of course, let you know. We will also project that the state of Colorado, which surprisingly has 74% of all precincts reporting, will go to Senator Tim Kaine, 53 to 45, when all is said and done, which is a wider margin than 2016. So Tim Kaine has expanded his margins in some areas, but it looks like he's losing, uh, losing votes in other areas. And here's just the map. Remember, dark blue are states that we have called, and dark and red are states that we have called as well. Pink are states that currently Donald Trump has a lead in, and light blue states are currently states that Tim Kaine has a lead in. And Florida, it appears, has given Trump a slight lead, though I'm confused because I didn't see any updates flash by, so I'll keep you posted on that. And with closings here at 11 o'clock p.m. here on the East Coast, we will project that California and its 55 electoral votes, the biggest prize here on Election Day, will go to Senator Tim Kaine. In the end, it will be 68 to 30, a good 38-point margin of victory for Tim Kaine. The state of Hawaii will also go to Tim Kaine, who is picking it up in a 55-point blowout, winning it 75-20 to 20 when all is said and done. We also project that the state of Idaho will go to Donald Trump 70% to 27%. And that's with six, and we currently only have 6% of precincts reporting. However, this is the final we expect. If things change, we will, of course, let you know. The state of Oregon, which is a mail-in only state, and that is why there is such a high number of precincts reporting, uh, we expect Tim Kaine to win 53 to 46, which is surprisingly close, considering third-party candidates have declined a little bit this year. 
and that's only a nine point margin in Oregon, which means it is kind of like New Mexico. It's actually closer than New Mexico. Washington as well, We, it looks like will be closer than New Mexico. Perhaps this is a sign of things to come, or perhaps this is just a, a fluky year. But it's 12 electoral votes will go to Senator Tim Kaine, and we have 93% of precincts reporting, as this is a mail-in state. When all is said and done, this is the vote, per, the percentage totals we expect. Currently, we rate Maine's at-large votes. It's two at-large votes, too close to call, and currently it is dead even between Trump and Tim Kaine. We are actually projecting, with 38% of precincts reporting, that Donald Trump will win the state of Iowa 56% to 43%. Um, similar to 2016, once Trump votes started coming in from Iowa, they didn't stop. We are also going to project Nebraska's Congressional District 2 and its one electoral vote to go to Donald Trump, 55 to 44, which is a little bit larger of a lead than maybe you would expect from this district. We are also ready to project North Carolina's 15 electoral votes, a major, major call. And Donald Trump will win this by five points, 52 to 47. When all is said and done, we only have, we have 67% of precincts reporting in the state, but based off of where returns are coming from and how many votes are left in other areas, we can comfortably make this call. And here is the map for you. I still haven't seen any updates on Florida though that could just be because our graphics are glitching out and Tim Kaine still maintains a lead there. I will let you know when our decision desk actually updates us. And we can actually project that Florida, um, we never did get that update, I'm apologizing for that, and currently it is here on the East Coast, it is 11.30, we are currently projecting that Florida will go to Donald Trump. We have 86% of precincts reporting, and when all is said and done, Trump will win 50 to 49. And of course, Florida, as we all know, has given us lots of late nights and has always, always, always been a close state, at least, you know, since the 90s. And that is the only call we get, an update we get here. And as I said, Georgia takes Georgia takes time. It's one of the last states on the East Coast to report, other than traditional swing states. Georgia just takes a long time to update us. And now it is turning 12 a.m. It is midnight here on the East Coast. And we are still rating Minnesota as too close to call. As a matter of fact, Tim Kaine has improved and with 56% of precincts reporting, the current margin is a dead heat where both candidates are tied at 48%. In the state of Virginia, we are rating this also as a dead heat with both candidates at 49% while we have 68% of precincts reporting. Arizona, we currently rate as too close to call and a state where both candidates are tied as well at 46%. And this is with 53% of precincts reporting. We do not know where more votes are coming from. We just know they're coming and we can't make projections based off of the information that we are getting. And this goes for all of the states. But we can project Maine's at large dis uh, votes two electoral votes, and if you remember, Tim Kaine was originally, based off of polls, projected to win, so this is actually a flip from 2016 and an upset. When all is said and done, and we currently have 96% of precincts reporting, when all is said and done, Donald Trump is expected to win this by 1.48 to 47. 
And in New Hampshire, we are also projecting that Donald Trump will win the state. We have 98% of precincts reporting, and Trump maintains a one-point lead there as well, 47 to 46. And it looks like we can project the state of Georgia, 53 to 45 for Donald J. Trump, a, an eight-point lead. We currently have 75% of precincts reporting. And based off of the information we have, we are comfortable enough to make this projection. And this is currently what the map looks like. And things are looking dire for D Tim Kaine and the Democrats. Not only does he have to maintain his leads in Michigan and Pennsylvania, as well as Nevada, he has to win all three swing states. He has to win Virginia, Minnesota, and Arizona. He has to win those. If he loses any of them, Donald Trump will continue on for a second term as our 45th president of the United States of America. And it is now 1230 here on the East Coast. And I think, nope, Arizona is t still too close to call. With 70% of precincts reporting, Trump holds a narrow one-point lead, 50% to 49%. Those electoral votes are still up for grabs, and I'm hearing word that we may have a major projection here. Nope, Pennsylvania is still too close to call, 47% to 47%, with 67% of precincts reporting. Those 20 electoral votes are still up in the air. Do we have a projection? And it looks like we have a projection. Tim Kaine will win the state of Michigan, and it's 16 electoral votes. 97% of precincts are reporting. This is a flip from 2016. And this is a state Tim Kaine desperately needed to win if he wanted to become our 46th president. And I think we have one more projection, and it is the state of Wisconsin, which Donald Trump will hold and win 50 to 48 percent. 93 percent of precincts are reporting and we're comfortable enough with this information as well as where votes are coming from in order to make this projection and that means we are and I'll get to that in a minute but I believe that means that Trump will continue on as president. I could be wrong. I, I don't remember the vote totals. Uh, Minnesota is still too close to call and that's a weird Number Our graphic is really glitching out. Um, I think it's supposed to be 47% or 40. It's either 47 or 48%. But with 67% of precincts reporting from the land of a thousand lakes, we cannot determine where its 10 electoral votes will go. And apparently, yeah, now that I'm doing the mental math, uh, and it looks like, yeah. I do not think, no, it should be 48%, I'm sorry. Um, it does not look like Donald Trump has been elected just yet, but returns are currently not looking too great. Donald Trump only needs to secure Arizona and he is president. He doesn't even need Pennsylvania or Virginia or Minnesota or Nevada or Alaska. And it is 1 a.m. here on the East Coast, and most people are probably asleep. And, of course, we can project. Um, we're going to Alaska first. I'm hearing that we have some major projections here at 1 a.m. Uh, but we're going to talk about Alaska first, the last frontier, because their polls just closed. And 57. we expect Donald Trump to win 57 to 40% in the the final in the 50th state of the union to close their polls, the last state to close polls, and pick up those three electoral votes, which usually by this point it's just a formality, but it still matters. But I do hear a major projection coming, and Arizona will give its 11 electoral votes to Donald Trump. We have 81% of precincts reporting and we are comfortable enough with that amount as well as where extra votes are coming from 
to make the determination that Donald Trump will win the state of Arizona, 52% to 47%, and it looks like he will become, will retain the Oval Office. But we, before we get to that, and just make, before, to make sure, uh, Tim Kaine will win the state of Nevada, 49 to 48%, and this is with 88% of precincts reporting. He will gain those six electoral votes. Minnesota is still too close to call, with Donald Trump and Tim Kaine tied at 49% apiece, with 77% of precincts reporting. But... And in the state of Virginia, it is much too close with both candidates tied at 48% with 77% of precincts reporting. Those 13 electoral votes are important to Tim King considering they're his home state. And he would like to win that even though it looks like he has lost the election. And in the state of Pennsylvania, it is much too close to predict. 73% of precincts are reporting and Donald Trump currently maintains a one-point lead there. As we said earlier in the evening, Pennsylvania tends to start with a wide Democrat margin and then become cl much closer over the evening. And this is what the map looks like, and I believe Donald Trump, with these votes, has actually won the presidency for his second term. And yes, we are projecting that Donald Trump will reach that 270 needed to win. And he is currently standing at 276 electoral votes, whereas Tim Kaine is res resting at 219 electoral votes. This means Donald Trump will continue on as president. And now it is 1.30 a.m. and Minnesota is still too close to call. And it looks like Donald Trump has pulled out to a slim lead again. But this state has been back and forth all evening. Um, Tim Kaine held a narrow lead there. Trump has held narrow leads there. We currently have 88% of precincts reporting. So this could be a long, long night for the state of Minnesota. And I'm actually getting word that Tim Kaine has conceded the election to Donald Trump over the phone and will make his concession speech around 2.30 a.m. to his supporters in Richmond, Virginia. And Donald Trump is expected to wait until after the concession speech to accept the victory. But we can project the state of Virginia here at 1.30 a.m. Apparently there were more votes left in, in southwest Virginia and rural parts of the state. And Trump, it appears, also improved his margins in Fairfax County and Loudoun County and Prince William County. Um, just enough to secure the state, 49% to 48%. And we could only make this projection just now as we got to 97% of precincts reporting. This is a flip, and this is a major, major upset. I don't think anybody could have seen this. Uh, Tim Kaine losing his home state in an election where we were expected to see Virginia continue on as a blue state. Because Virginia really has, at least we thought, become a blue state. And we can also project the state of Pennsylvania will go to Donald J. Trump. We have 89% of precincts reporting from the Keystone State. And Trump will win 50% to 49% when all is said and done. And this is what our map currently looks like. And it looks like Donald Trump has created at least an electoral landslide in terms of vote, in terms of the popular vote it's probably going to be a photo finish. But it does look like Trump has improved his margins in many, many places. And we can now, here at 2 a.m., before Tim Kaine finally makes his concession speech at 2.30, um, we can finally make our last projection. 
with 95% of precincts reporting, we're projecting that Minnesota will, for the first time since 1972, a total of 48 years of voting Democrat, Donald Trump will be the first Republican to win the state of Minnesota since Richard Nixon. He will win it by a narrow one point lead, 49% to 48%, when the final 5% of precincts do report their totals. And Tim Kaine will lose in an electoral landslide. And I believe we're hearing another projection that we can actually project the popular vote, which will go to Donald Trump, 49% to 48%. We only have 78% of precincts reporting nationally. Um, most of those are in California, New York, Illinois, and also the um, states of Washington, Oregon, and those won't be updated for at least another couple of days, and we won't stay here um, to update you on that just because it's unimportant. But this is just what our data is suggesting the final vote total will be. And... The Electoral College final is appearing to be a 100-point victory for Donald Trump, 319 to 219. And just a look at our final, final map. Donald Trump has made some impressive gains, flipping the state of Virginia, flipping the state of New Hampshire, flipping Maine's at-large electoral vote, and flipping the state of Minnesota, which is arguably the most impressive feat. Uh, Tim Kaine, however, did strike back, flipping the state of Michigan in favor of the Democrats, though it was a narrow, narrow victory. Anyway, we would like to thank you for watching our election coverage tonight, and we will get you to a live feed of Tim Kaine's concession speech as soon as possible, and then to Donald Trump's victory speech as soon as possible. Join us again in four years when we cover the 2024 election, which will be which will feature two brand new candidates. Anyway, have a good evening and get some rest.